uh, behind the reigning champions, Manchester City, having played the same number of games. Here is what Eric Ten Hag thought about it all. You could see that you were getting quite frustrated in that first half before Marcus found his first goal of this afternoon. Just get into that a little bit more. What do you think the issues were exactly? Oh, I don't have so much time here with you. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, luckily, um, we had a half time. Uh, we could repair uh, some stuff. I think second half was brilliant, came our sides. I think that was the way I want to, to see our our team playing. It was a lot of uh, pleasure, but it has to do with uh, getting into the right positions. It has to do with playing simple football, uh, playing between the lines, runs behind, and it was enjoyable to watch. And uh, we create so many chances and we create, uh, scored great goals. Yes, Marcus Rashford with two of those. I think we're running out of words to describe what he's doing. How, how do you describe it, the heights that he just keeps hitting? Yeah, um, it's first about him. He's getting in the right position, but don't forget the team because our team goals. And so I want to highlight Bruno. Uh, it's uh, again two great assists uh, one on Ressi, one on Jaden Sancho. And so he has to receive the balls, otherwise, he can't score. And uh, Bruno is one, of course, also the one from Fred, uh, beautiful as well. Uh, but there are so many players who can pass him the ball in the right moment uh, when he is in a position, uh, like Bruno, like Jaden, and like like others, or like Fred, um, like Christian Eriksen, who is unluckily not available. Sabitzer can do it as well. So we have to play. We can play good football, uh, but we have to follow the rules. Chris, congratulations, not just on the result, but a, a special afternoon for you personally. How good does it feel to have broken that personal record now? Yeah, it's obviously a, a nice feeling, you know, to be scoring goals and ultimately winning games. Um, I think first half we didn't actually play that well. Second half we played a lot better. Um, you know, we found people in pockets, found Bruno in pockets, Fred, and, you know, they, they're creating chances for us. So um, we need to try and look to do that from the beginning. But it's also a positive that we're not playing at our best and we're going at half time um, a goal up. So um, definitely stuff to improve on and, and learn from, but overall a good day. Yeah, you mentioned there, particularly the opening stages of that first half, perhaps as a side you weren't at your best. There's a lot of pressure on you when you found yourself through on goal, not just personally, but for the team as well, to try and get yourselves out in front. You did have a moment, didn't you, before you looked up? So what was going through your head as you went to place that? I, I was going to pass it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to pass it. I think Garner made a, a good run, um, but the defender was on the inside of him. Um, so yeah, we had a little look at the keeper and then a look at, at Garner and I just thought shooting across the goal would be the, the best option. If the keeper does save it, then he can have a chance of tapping it in for a rebound. So um, always going to go across goal there, but yeah, good to, for it to hit the back of the net. Your reaction, quite understated, actually. Was there a certain amount of relief there, do you think? Uh, for the first goal? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I think when teams are putting pressure on you, they're creating some, some good opportunities. Um, David, brilliant save. Uh, I, think, I think it was his arm or his, or his leg um, early on in the first half. And they're important moments. And, you know, without without having someone like him in the net, we can't go on to, to win the game. Because um, if they go if they go in 1-0 up or they go 1-0 up in the game, it's completely... Darren, does that last answer just typify what Eric Ten Hag has brought to Manchester United? It is all about the team ethic and collectiveness. 100%. I mean, he's not going to allow any player, even the form that Marcus Rush was in, to take all the plaudits. It's not just about him. And you can quite clearly see, yeah, I'm sure behind closed doors, and not to, to everyone, he's probably praising him, giving him the talk that he, that he needs, obviously giving him the tools to why he's in this type of form. But the moment it's about speaking about one individual, no, it's about the whole team. He mentioned Fred, Sancho, Bruno, a collective bunch of players, not just Marcus Rashford. So... Listen, it's, he's a fantastic manager. I like listening to him speak. I think he speaks a lot of sense. We can quite clearly see that he's, he's creating a culture there at Manchester United where never know one player is going to be bigger than the rest of the squad. How has he united such a fragmented dressing room in such a short space of time? Well, he's obviously come um, with a pedigree. He's, he was successful in his previous job. Uh, he's, he can obviously manage. And, you know, you've got to try to, to gather not only 25-odd uh, players together, but a whole club. Um, you know, training grounds are big places now and you, you spend a lot of your life there and trying to, to, uh, to keep a, a great spirit amongst about 100-plus people is, uh, is not easy. Um, but he's done that. 
Uh, I bet he can't believe, though, his, his... But he could never have envisaged Marcus Rashford hitting the heights that he has been hitting. I mean, when you lose all the goals that, let's say, Ronaldo um, would, would normally give you, I bet he was scratching his head thinking, right, OK, I've got to do this for the benefit of the team, but who's going to step into the shoes? Who's going to score enough goals for us to be serious challengers? I don't think he thought they could be serious challengers, but one man has really, really risen to the occasion and that's Marcus Rashford, and he scored so many important goals. And now, all of a sudden, you know, he's, uh, he's probably the sole reason, or one of the big reasons anyway, why Manchester United have got a chance of, of winning silverware this season. He's added to that, of course. The signing of Casemiro was a masterstroke, uh, absolute top-class player. They've got good players all over the place. But there is room for improvement as well. I look at that squad, I look at the team playing today, and it didn't... You know, it didn't blow me away that the names on the team sheet. I still think the likes of Arsenal and, and Manchester City have got better players at the moment. But I think this manager is getting, you know, is going somewhere. And the whole feeling around the club, maybe a new takeover, the fans are purring again. It just feels like Manchester United are, are on the way back. Yeah, and it feels like an old Manchester United week ahead. Barcelona at home mm. in Europe at 2-2 and a Wembley Cup final. We could be sitting here in a week's time. They might have a place in the last 16 of the Europa League and a trophy in the cabinet. Yeah, that is certainly Manchester United of old and something that we've not seen from Manchester United for a while. But Eric Ten Hag deserves a lot of credit for that because most spoke there about the, the, the Ronaldo scenario. That could have gone either one of two ways because a lot of people weren't sure whether it was the right decision, taking all that goals out of the team, big personality, but he knew what was good for that dressing room. And Marcus Rashford almost single-handedly went, well, if he's going to go, I'm going to be the man to step up. He's done that. But I'm sure I agree with Michael. I'm not quite sure he would have believed he would have scored that many goals. We all know Marcus Rashford's a good player, but if you look at the, the past couple of seasons, he hasn't been at his best. But it's almost like a weight's been lifted off his shoulders and he's going to repay the manager with the faith that he's shown in him and he's scoring every single week. But not only that, he's playing really well. Yeah, and I just go back to the, uh, the Jose Mourinho analogy when he first came to England with Chelsea. Before he won all those trophies, he won the League Cup in February. And he said many times that gave the group a taste of winning and a mentality to win. So therefore, in his first season, this time next week, the, the cup final will have just finished at Wembley. If United can do that, can you see a similar taste for, for this group of players? Absolutely. I think, you know, I think everyone can see it. Everyone can feel it. Everybody now believes in Ten Hag. Even if you're not a Manchester United fan, you're probably looking at them thinking, uh-oh, they're on the way back. Um, so... It's happening. And whether it happens, you know, at the weekend... Do you think it will? Probably, yeah. I think Newcastle have been a little bit unlucky. Obviously, the goalkeeper situation, one or two injuries. They're not in the form that they were earlier on in the season. It all points to a Manchester United win at the moment. Um, and as you say, if that happened, then all of a sudden you can just feel this momentum starting to gather. And you can already feel it. It's a question of when. But if they can do it this weekend and get that first bit of silverware, then you can see it sort of you know, happening quicker than anybody had envisaged, really. Because that could be a watershed moment. It's six years since they won anything, Manchester United. Yeah, it could be the start of things to come. We know that Manchester City certainly have had a dominance on this on this trophy for the last few years. And look at the kick it gives them. I mean, they win it every single year and all of a sudden, second half of the season, they're right at it. But if Manchester United could go on and win this in Ten Hag's first season, then I think it'll be, it will be a bit of a worry for other teams because you're right, they've got the whole takeover news come in. They're certainly a lot closer to the title than a lot of people thought. It, they always, everyone at the start would have said Manchester City, Liverpool. Well, it's been Arsenal that's been the team pushing Manchester City, but Man United are right there or thereabouts. And if they were to win that, that, that Carabao, it probably make them slight favourites, then you'd have to say certainly from now to the end of the season, they are right in that title race for sure. The other side of the story then from Old Trafford in a moment, the Leicester captain James Madison first, the manager. Brendan Rodgers. And having started so well, I imagine that's a tough one to take, isn't it? Yeah, d disappointing result in the end. Um, yeah, I thought first half we were we were excellent. We uh, we created the best opportunities and we looked a real threat. Um, the game makes a great save, uh, and obviously, and Kells has a chance at the at the back post. We probably needed to speed up the game in the final third a little bit more to get more opportunities, but we looked a real threat and. Um, and played a good game, and then obviously we make the, the mistake for the first goal, and um, that was probably the, the best chance they had. And, and Marcus is in great form, so he's very, very clinical in that moment. But at half time, we're, we're well in the game, just got to come out and get control of the ball again and, and start passing it. And we didn't quite do that. We uh, we, we give away a, a disappointing second goal, and 
uh, and then the third one quickly after, and that uh, I'd seen the game go away from us really. So, um, so yeah, so it was a disappointing second half. Lots to look at in the first half, and uh, and take into our next game. Can you put your finger on what it was in that first half, where you have found the goals in your last two matches against Villa at Spurs? Just why you couldn't find them out there today at Old Trafford? Just that last bit, I think. That last pass or the, or the finish. David De Gea makes a couple of good saves, if I remember correctly. But we had the chances, the, the, the shots were there, the, the opportunities were there on the break. We, we caught them high a couple of times and that's, that was the game plan. But like I said, you, you get punished if you don't put them away and get a lead. Um, and that's exactly what happened to us. In your last couple of matches, going behind though, it has actually served as a bit of a catalyst. You've then found your way back. What was the difference today, do you think? Well, I think um, the second half was was not how we wanted to start it. And then the second goal really took the took it out of us, really. I think we recovered after this. And then they, they, uh, they dominated the ball from, from then on in. Limited us to very little in the in the last half an hour, last 45 minutes. So frustrating afternoon after starting so well. It's one of them scratching our heads, but three 0 and probably didn't do do his justice. So um, got to move on quickly. They move on to Arsenal, the league leaders. Um, are they the fine margins in the Premier League? Sometimes, if they take the lead in the first half when they were dominant, 100%. Leicester were really good in that first half, it, and we, we showed two saves there from De Gea, but there was also many breaks whereby the final pass, the final finish, wasn't quite up to scratch and, and they outnumbered Manchester United in, in certain periods as well. So in that first half, they could have easily been ahead going to half-time. They would have been scratching their heads thinking, how are we losing? They've hardly had a kick. Um, they've hardly had a chance. I think that the, the shots were about 7-2 or something um, in Leicester's favour in that first half. So it was uh, quite dominant in many ways. But then as soon as Manchester United, with that clinical player, uh, that clinical finish, all of a sudden they're ahead and they didn't look like losing. The second half, they did tweak things. Eric Ten Hag mentioned that he just needed to get in at half-time and change a few things. Sancho came on. They changed things about a little bit. Veghorst went back up front. Rashford back to the left, what we uh, perceive as, as Manchester United normal um, system. And all of a sudden they just looked very, very comfortable again. And is it important, Les, to remember that first half to, to take forward after their, their two wins going into this game today? 100%, because they played well in that, in that first half. It's just about that, that last little bit where they could be a bit more clinical. Harvey Barnes having a good chance, Ian Nacho making the goalkeeper work. But they played awfully well, not even creating the opportunities, but just keeping possession of the ball and, and opening up Manchester United. So they have to take that first half performance into their next game and, and have to be more clinical because, again, it doesn't get much easier coming up with Arsenal. coming up. So you've got to take your opportunities once you get them. Just back to United, the fact that they were in front at half-time with a clinical striker, not playing well and in the lead, is, is that just exactly where they're at at the moment? Oh, when things are going well, it, it just flows, doesn't it? You know, when things aren't going well, you, you, you're missing chances and somebody goes up the other end and has one kick on your goal and it goes in, it's like... It, it, just, it just happens like that. Football's a cruel game sometimes, but when you've got someone like Rashford in really good form, confident uh, as he's ever been, then... You've always got a chance and it showed again today.